Welcome, everyone. This is a super exciting day because it is our first in-person artist talk that we've had in a very long time. So thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm very excited to have Ray Keeley here with us today for his artist talk. Um, and the exhibit that's showing is going to be on all summer. And it's called Chasing Identity and Reconciliation. So uh, let's give a big warm welcome to Ray. Okay. Uh, also, before we get things going, I wanted to start things off in a good way, and I'd like to acknowledge that we're gathered here on Treaty 6, uh, the traditional land of the Métis. We pay respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place, and we reaffirm our commitment to working together in a good way towards reconciliation. So um, also, I just wanted to say that we can't have these sorts of events without our funders. So I wanted to thank Affinity Credit Union, Sask Arts, Sask Culture, Sask Lotteries, and the Department of Canadian Heritage. I think that's everything. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we've started the day off. Um, sitting under this lovely and large painting, and it's called Summer Camp. Um, Ray, I was wondering, you and I chatted a little bit about this earlier, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what this painting is about. Okay, this is uh, Summer Camp, and uh, actually it was, uh, I did uh, a print actually first, which most, most people do the painting first and then do the print, but I, I went the other way around because uh, I just felt it, it could use the size, and uh, but it was it was from a story that uh, uh, my parents, well, especially my mom. My mom and I talked a lot, and she talked about summer camp and how that worked up in the north. Uh, the, she's from La Ronge. My dad was a trapping up there, and during the summer they would put out a camp, and they have, uh, and uh, of course the the ladies would be at the camp mostly looking after everything that was going on there and the guys would be out uh, fishing and hunting and bringing in the winter supply and you always had one camp dog and uh, just for protection uh, at Tim and um, but they, she would have the family there and and I guess it's uh, the the coloration is is kind of uh, interesting in the sense I, I use these horizontal lines and to me, they're time zones. They're time zones in the in the in the scenery and in, in the caption of what's going on. And I know I've been asked before, well, what does the red line mean? Well, it's it's the blood of the people. And what does the yellow line mean? It means the spirit of the people. And uh, so I think it still has a really it resonates. It has a, a real meaning for today and for for uh, what, especially where uh, First Nation people are right now and, uh, and acknowledging uh, 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 the strength of, of uh, many of the First Nation women in, uh, in our culture, which was originally was a matriarchal culture anyway. So, so it, uh, it kind of pays homage to that. With this image of the, you know, the woman and she has her hand protectively over the shoulder of the child. I know you were talking a little bit too about um, the role that the, the women were playing um, in terms of protecting the, the, the kids. Did you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, uh, matter of fact, I was just, uh, we have a friend from uh, Thompson, Manitoba, and um, she's uh, uh, Cree from up there. And and uh, she's my age so she would have uh, maybe a little bit younger but she was uh, always protected by her parents whenever uh, people came to take kids they had places in the bush where they would hide them and she got away with that for uh, most of her life her kokum would take her out to a, a quiet place and when the people came you know they would ask questions and you know, they didn't. She wasn't here, and that kind of stuff. But, uh, but finally, one day they did catch her, and so she did spend two years in residential school. But, uh, but uh, the family had was able to keep keep her f out of being there for a long term. My um, mother was uh, in residential school 
in Prince Albert. And uh, everybody has a different experience. So my, my mom was kind of like a teacher's pet. So she spent a lot of time because her parents had passed away. So she'd spend the summer a lot of times with uh, the, the nuns there. And she never talked badly about residential school. And she was one of those shining kids from a residential school. And I asked an elder once about that situation, and she, she was a, this other el, el, lady elder from uh, Yellow Quill, and, uh, and she was a rebel. She had run away many times and had a two by four bust over her back, and she, she uh, finally, they finally gave up on her. They just let her be when she was about 16, they just left her alone. But I asked, I told her about my mom's situation, because my mom wouldn't let me speak badly about residential school. But, uh, and uh, this, uh, her name is Pauline Pelly. She's passed now, but she said uh, there was three kinds of people, uh, kids at residential school. There was a teacher's pet, like my mom was. There was the status quo, people just kind of get by best you can. And there was those at Rebel. And she said, I have no re uh, ill feeling toward any of those groups because it was all about survival. And, and that kind of hit home for me. So, <clears throat> yeah, my mom still has that, still had, before she passed, she still had that, uh, she wanted to think the best of people, right, of, uh, of all people, and she would find it really hard if right now if she knew all the things that were going on. Thanks for sharing all of that. It, <clears throat> your paintings, or all of your, your prints and your paintings and your carvings have so much power visually. Um, it's also very interesting to hear the backstories as well. And I know they're very, lots of them are very personal and we really appreciate hearing that. Um, I have another painting here. There's so many pieces in this work, that it, or in this exhibit, that it was so hard to zero in on a few of them. But um, this piece um, here is called Behind the Scenes. And while we have these two here together, you can see how uh, in Ray's exhibit, there are certain motifs that you have that run through so many of these pieces, which make this show, makes this exhibit hold together formally um, so beautifully. The colors are energizing. They all feel very powerful. I know you said uh, earlier on in your career, you didn't think of yourself as being political, but that things, it, it's, it's in there naturally. Certain things keep coming up. Um, themes come through your work uh, again and again. And so uh, so this one's called Behind the Scenes, and it's part of the SAS Arts Permanent Collection. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about this piece, because there's another piece in this show called Brothers that it's like a mirror image almost of this. So tell, tell us about this. Yeah, this uh, this uh, particular process is called mono printing, and it was done on uh, on a litho press, and uh, I had these really nice uh, French inks that are just vibrant and great to work with, and and very deadly. <laughs> but but uh, the uh, uh, I was uh, this is from 1990, and during that year you had the uh, Oka crisis in Ontario. And uh, there was many um, pictures and things that came out about that Oka crisis. That, and, you know, one of the there's people lost their lives there. There's and and to this day that has not been resolved. It still has not been totally resolved. So, but I was looking at those uh, uh, images, and uh, I was working at the university uh, print studio and. People were asking, well, what do you think about what's going on? And I just, uh, and, uh, I just started thinking about that. The, the brother's print that you'll see came first. And because it's a mono print, um, uh, sometimes, like, I, I, I think my work, it talks to me. It tells me it needs to do something. I need to change it or I th there's, there's more to talk about. So I will... I did the brother's print and I started pulling off like that paper doll images of, of uh, 
of of the the, the people in the background there but and I could see, wow, there's some cool colors. There's still some nice ink happening. There's some things I could do with that. And uh, so I wanted to show that solidarity that uh, that was behind the scenes uh, during that time. And actually, I, I, I do know a fellow that came from, um, there was a, a famous picture in the National Geographic of a soldier and a warrior face to face, and it's about ready to go. He comes from the Beardies Reserve up here. And uh, and it's just interesting that you know he's he's a great guy and and uh, he's we're friends on Facebook and all that stuff, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's interesting to revisit that and revisit that whole idea and and it's something that keeps revolving around and just keeps happening. So, um. From where I'm sitting right now, and I know our in-person audience maybe can't see it, uh, is this a actual stitching over top, or is that in the uh, piece? Uh, that was a, a drawing. I could draw by, back with uh, with like uh, ink pencils and stuff like that. Uh, I used a lot of found objects. I used a lot of... I, l I love pigeon feathers because they really squish out and give you lots of neat detail. And uh, and you can paint them up, and you can do all sorts of stuff with them. And or I can do templates and put them down. Uh, I, I you know onion skin from uh, the the from the bags. I would put them in there, and uh, sometimes I'll find a, a doily at a restaurant, and I'll save that and use it in a print. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. It's experimental, um, playing with masking tape that I've inked up and and put across and uh, and it all has to happen fast or it starts to dry up. <laughs> I, I have noticed um, with all of your work that you tend to go back and forth from different pieces and like you know a, a print might influence a painting or you may do a carving and then take a rubbing of it which then becomes a painting or a drawing. Or a print, yeah. So I love how um, you sort of use inspiration from your, your pieces to inform other ones as well. I don't think they're finished talking. So they still want to talk, right? So there's still a story to be said. And, uh, and sometimes I'll sit on them for years and all of a sudden look back at it and say, you know, he wants to talk again, right? <laughs> okay, so now we've transported ourselves to another area of the gallery, uh, another part of the exhibit, and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the pieces uh, in this area. Uh, first of all, just even, I'm not sure if both of these are showing on, on the screen right now, but if they are, you can see what I was talking about, how your pieces hold together visually so powerfully just with how the colors flow and these horizontal lines and the suns or the moons it really has that seasonal suggestion at all times but um, this piece here is called symbiotic and it's acrylic on canvas and it's part of your mystic is it mystic animal mystic animal series um, and so just if we're a little I don't know if everyone at home can see but we have a bison uh, right here in the center and a magpie, magpie yeah at the top do you want to talk a little bit about um, you know the title of this piece and how it relates to the work yeah this is uh, symbiotic and it was uh it's, it's funny that the painting itself is I, I wanted to do the buffalo and uh, and the magpie because they have a unique relationship on the prairies. So they, they uh, just like many birds, they would you know pick the my, my, uh, the buffalo clear of insects, pests, and then they would you know take out uh, old hair balls and stuff like that for making nests. And and the bison didn't mind having a, a friend like that along. So. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to do that. And plus Ian Tyson had a, had a song called Magpie and I, <laughs> <laughs> I like that song. But anyways, uh, uh, so what I did was, 
I started uh, putting together the, the the mystic bison, and I really enjoyed doing that. It's uh, I put it together. I I I can draw you out an animal because I've done so many workshops and stuff. I and just do the outline, and then I start creating uh, the piece. And the piece again is telling me what it should be. Um, uh, I usually put the heart where I know where the heart would be, but I, other than that, everything else is kind of is uh, put together with rhythms of color and shape and paths or paw prints and different things like that. And uh, I guess that uh, way of working for me is like uh, the closest I ever come to uh, doing uh, composing music um, because I'm just going with the flow of what my what needs to be done uh, just kind of and believing in what you're doing and saying okay it needs a cool spot here it needs a, a round spot here it needs a, something there and and so I, I put it down and I, I I trust that so I put that in there but when uh, someone was asked me well what what does you know why symbiotic and I said well and when you think of reconciliation, that's what we, we really should be doing is we should be appreciating each, each other's differences and enhan- enhancing each other to to become uh, part of the land and part of this country. So in that sense, uh, the symbiotic relationship of animals and birds and different things is a lesson that uh, we should look at in reconciliation. So, and uh, And that's just kind of a very simple way of looking at it, but but yeah, it is interesting. Even uh, when I, this one here that's called uh, uh, Metawetan, uh, let's play. And if you see the the warrior in the in the head or uh, in of that, well, when I was working on that, I was I had made that little far bush on the lake, and as I was doing my uh, drawing and and doing the patterns, I looked in the bush there and I could see two eyes and I thought well it wants to come out so I started putting in the eyes and uh, and I realized it wants to be a warrior head and uh, so when you look at it um, the bear is like a headdress it's like a bear headdress on a warrior and it goes down to his feet which are his moccasins but he's got his braids and everything coming down the side of the bear. And that's just composition. I never thought, well, I want to do this. That's talking to me as I'm working. And it's telling me where it wants me to go with it. So it's fun doing that, and it's fun of that discovery whole idea. So it's part of a, a journey, too, which I, which I really like. Yeah, I think... Um I feel like I'm envious of the the trust that you're able to um, have in that process, but I also think it, it must come from so many years of making art. You said you started when you were 11 with your first, it was like a professional commission, really, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, when I was 11, I like I was born in Calgary and raised in uh, Treaty 7 country, uh, which is... Uh, and very close with the uh, Sutina First Nation, the SRC people. And uh, the Calgary Indian Friendship Center used to put on art competitions, and I was always winning these competitions for a year of art classes. And, and, and then one day, um, well, everybody knows John Diefenbaker, the Saskatchewan Prime Minister. Well, he was honored there because John Diefenbaker... Uh, signed it, the document that allowed First Nation people to have the vote. Uh, and uh, offered more freedom as a Canadian, a Canadian citizen. Uh, not totally everything was perfect, but it was one step forward. And they wanted to honor John Diefenbaker in 1963, and they asked if I would do it, do a calligraphy drawing uh, uh, honoring that occasion, and then I put a, a, a chief's head on the top of it, and and so that was kind of a momentous thing for an 11-year-old, right? So, and uh, 
Well, I, I had I had actually sold paintings earlier in that. I remember my grade four art teacher bought bought a painting from me, which he still has when I was from nine years old. So uh, I was fortunate to be loving art. And, and she used to always say, uh, uh, when Ray does his assignments, I always get uh, the assignment and then I get great pictures of animals all the way around that border. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so people recognized my my talent early and helped encourage me. And uh, and uh, so doing drawing and stuff like that comes pretty naturally for me. That's awesome. Um, I I also just when you were talking about. Um, using a lot of animal forms in your work and things like that. I also love how in this Mystic Animal series, the background and the foreground, uh, like it's transparent, you know, and you can always see nature coming through and everything. And the natural world comes through very strongly in all of your um, pieces. And uh, do you want to maybe talk a little bit because you have Cree moon calendar um like you have a lot of different seasons listed in these pieces you want to just explain that a little bit yeah okay um i guess it, a lot of that my mystic uh, animal series actually came when i was uh, i we lived on the coast of quadra island for a little while and um, and i was watching i went to see some of the west coast uh artwork and I loved what they were doing with uh, you know the whales and the ravens and the different animals from the, the coast and and they were using symbols to develop these ideas of animals and I thought well I can do that <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was in a I was actually in a class and, and I, I, I have the sketch I did a, a mystic moose print but it's actually, it was sketched on the back of a notebook while I was listening to a lecture. And, uh, and, and, and then I had written on the top, the real and the ideal. And my mind was churning about that whole concept of how that works. And, and, uh, and this is what you got today. <laughs> That's awesome. Did anyone have any questions about these pieces behind us or the the Mystic Animal series. I like the little stories within the story. And a lot of my murals and, and my carvings have that. And I, I, I like to see that uh, a five-year-old or a four-year-old kid can come along and say, wow, that's really cool. You know, it has, it has nothing to do with the, the big picture. It's just something that he can grasp out of that. And, uh, and, and that's always seemed to be very important to me, to be able to do that, to, to, to speak to a wider audience, I guess, in a way. The, the comment there was just that the more you look, the more you see. At this moment, we're going to just actually get up and, and stand by your other uh, piece over here, this drum. So... This is a beautiful drum uh, that you brought with, with you today. Uh, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about where this came from. Okay, um, uh, last year, they, well, I came through here too. There was a, a, a walk for the murdered and uh, missing indigenous women, and, and it came through Warman. And I was, at the time, I was uh, artist in residence at the high school there. And I heard about it, and I started telling the staff and students about uh, what was going on, that they were coming through. And uh, one of the participants was uh, uh, Ryland's small child, which is, he's from Beardies too. And uh, and uh, he got into making drums. And then Jan Ray, who is uh, she's she heads up a lot of these uh, marches and organizes them and. And all of a sudden I get a call and I said, well, Ryland's donated a, a drum and we'd like you to paint it. And uh, so, and, and, they, and it's funny because they wanted it right away, right, right away. So, uh, and I said, well, it's going to take me a little time. And, and you know, a couple of days later I had it done 
and they were so excited about it. And so it, it has the meaning of uh, the Thunderbird who's carrying the, the peace pipe. And, uh, and again, he's, the Thunderbird is a, a, a mediator between the Creator and man, bringing the prayers and the concerns both ways, right? So, so we have the orange shirt representing the uh, murdered and missing Indian women and then we have uh, the buffalo which it talks about the the people and this particular um, medicine wheel is uh, the colors of the Plains Cree uh, from around this area and uh, usually when you like you see also sometimes uh, with black that's usually the the, uh, the Sioux people colors for for the medicine wheel but um, so it was good, and, and then they, they wanted the image right away, and uh, they, they put it on one of the vans for the Saskatoon Indian uh, Friendship Center vans. And so one of those that's decorating there, plus some of Kevin Pease and uh, Jerry Whitehead and a few other, uh, Ernie Schools and those kind of guys. So, uh, yeah, it was a good piece, and, uh, and I... I asked Jan if I could use it for, for bringing here to, to uh, also, because that's another big issue, right? That's another big issue that we, we, we're concerned about these days. Just to expand on that a little thought, your last thought there a little bit, um, in a gallery like this, it is interesting to talk about um, pieces that are intended for ceremony, uh, intended to be accompanied by song or story. Yeah. And it's often, um, I don't know if you find sometimes a conflict of, um, you know, showing a, a piece like this, or do you ever advise gallery uh, owners of, you know, how to, how to treat work like this? Uh, yeah, I do get those questions, and I, I, I do, I am uh, concerned. I asked uh, particularly Jan uh, Ray, because she was going to come and pick it up so she could take it on a walk, right? And I said, well, could I use it again? And she was, felt very honored that I would uh, bring it here and be able to share this with, with you. So uh, I think you need to do that. You need to get the right permission from people to, to do that. And sometimes uh, people show things that probably should have been advised on first, right? And and that happens. And uh, but no, this was this was a good piece to uh, to because I wanted to do the right protocol. The protocol is very important as far as the First Nation people and and uh, and and you know the way things are going, the way things work. So so yeah, no, I got the full and and she gave me some sweet grass and different things that I use today to to uh, smudge the place. And I should mention, we're very lucky to have this piece with us today because it's going to go with you when you head out. So this is a one-time only <laughs> experience here. Well, it has been an honor to have you here today um, in person. It's so exciting. And just to have had you uh, with us for our community art project. And you're no stranger to the station. And so it's so nice when you come and you can visit with us and each time I learn so much more about you and your work and I appreciate you more every time. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>